The next part of the circuit we'll look at is this one. It looks a little bit complicated. Let's ignore all of this for now. And uh, let's ignore, ignore all of this for now. Um, so if you take a test for ham radio, um, you will be asked to identify the types of oscillators. And um, I think there's three types you need to identify, a, a Pierce, a Colpitts, and a Hartley, if I remember right. Um, and the way you remember them is if you see a crystal, you know it's a Pierce. If you see two capacitors, you know it's a Colpitts. And if you see an inductor, you know it's a Hartley. So we see two capacitors here, and there are two split capacitors like this. So you just kind of memorize this and you say, oh, that's a Colpitts. <laughs> and then you act real smart. Um, but uh, the Colpitts uh, works by having a, a local feedback right here from emitter to base. That's positive feedback. Um, when this one goes up, this one also goes up, so it's positive. And uh, it goes through this, and you, you get you get a uh, positive feedback, and then you have to then you have to make it only oscillate at one particular frequency, and then you add an inductor and a capacitor and stuff. So so uh, let's kind of take a look at that. <coughs> this is out of the volume. <coughs> what was this volume? Part one, volume two. And there's a section in here in the ARL handbook about oscillators. And this is more of a uh, conceptual idea of what a Colpitz is and what a Hartley is. The, here are the two capacitors, and here's the split inductor. So, yeah, if you if you use half a capacitor, it's it's Colpitz. If you use half of an inductor, it's the Hartley. All right, um, and then it shows some examples and stuff. But um, let's go ahead and let's see what do I want to do next. Let let me kind of let's kind of look at at something I found online. All right. So this is uh, a Colpitz oscillator. Here's the split capacitors, and here's the uh, NPN and everything. So it's an oscillator. And then, in order to make it oscillate at a particular frequency, you have a uh, inductor, usually an inductor to ground, inductor capacitor to ground. So this is a series resonance circuit here, and that's the way you make it oscillate. Okay. So this thing will oscillate at a particular frequency. Now, if we wanted to make it oscillate at different frequencies, we would put in different capacitors. And if we wanted to tune it, uh, we could use a variable capacitor. Uh, yeah, let me grab one of those. So if you open up your granddad's, or maybe these days your great granddad's radio, um, it would have one of these in it. Uh, it would have this big uh, capacitor, so all of these parallel plates moving in and out, and you change the, the area that the plates intersect, and uh, that would be your tuning capacitor. So this would be the big tuning knob on the front of your, of your rolled radio, and you would tune in the radio station, and, and it would be modifying an, an oscillator much, much like this one. It would use, be using vacuum tubes back in those days, but yeah, it would have a variable capacitor. Well, we're gonna be using a variable capacitor, but we're gonna be using a kind of a solid state variable capacitor, so, in last videos, we showed what a, uh, a vera, vera diode, a, a veractor ver variable capacitance diode is. It's one of these. So we have that in parallel with this. So the capacitance that this uh, oscillator sees is going to be these two capacitors in parallel. And then this one we can vary. And we can vary it by putting voltages in over here. Um, and then we have this capacitor here that blocks the DC, so you it just, this doesn't see any DC. But um, yeah, I showed this in the last video, so if you haven't seen that, go back and take a look. So let's look at our circuit. <clears throat> All right, so here's our oscillator, and it comes around, and here's our, here's our inductor. Our inductor then goes uh, through another capacitor to ground, so these are both capacitors. So um, this one is using this as the tuning capacitor. And it uses another one in there just for good luck. <laughs> um, it, it also blocks the, this one blocks the DC, this one blocks the DC, but yeah, these two together are gonna be the, uh, are gonna be the, tuning, the tuning diodes. So we need to be able to put some voltage on here in order to tune. And that voltage comes in through here for, through a 47 ohm, a 47 ohm resistor. So here's test point one. If we injected a voltage here on test point one, we could make this oscillate anywhere we wanted to just by changing, just by changing this voltage, okay? And yeah, we're gonna do that. Now, is it safe to just inject voltages on TP1? Well, you need to take a look at the entire schematic. Uh, and I did, and 
Uh, it might be hard for you guys to see. But anyway, there's a whole bunch of resistors over here. And, oh, oh, sorry, a bunch of resistors over here. And everybody has a resistor feeding into TP1. So we can grab TP1 and force it to a voltage without, without destroying anything else. And so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna hot wire, we're gonna hot wire this thing and see if we can't, uh, can't make it oscillate at the voltage that we want to oscillate it at. Let's go try that. All right, I'm gonna put a scope probe on test point two. Uh, remember test point two is uh, way over here. So it's the output of the oscillator, okay? So the output of the oscillator. And this is a local oscillator, so it's not gonna be the final frequency, it's gonna be an IF frequency. And uh, I think you can see there, we're at 123.93. And if I change the uh, uh, channel switch on the front panel, uh, it goes to different, it will go to different frequencies. All right, so let's put it back to, uh, it doesn't really matter where it is. Uh, we'll put it back to, put it back to there. So, um, uh, we are now going to inject a um, DC voltage onto test point one. So let me get some, let me get some clip leads and our clip leads are going to go onto test point one and ground. And I'm going to take over. I'm going to Take over. There I am taking over at zero volts. Um, so we've gone to uh, 115. Now I'm going to increase the voltage. You can see the voltage right there. Uh, I'm going to increase the voltage. And you can see that we're changing the uh, we're changing the speed of the oscillation here. So we have reached inside the circuit. Let me go over that again. Let's see back up here in a second. I'm injecting voltages here onto T, on, so my fingers in the way, onto TP1. It's setting the capacitance of these uh, diodes. And then we are monitoring test point two, which is over there. So we're monitoring this, this right here, okay? So we can see that this is a voltage controlled oscillator, a VCO. It's uh, getting its voltage some plump place, but we don't know where yet, but it is be able to go between different frequencies that of interest. Um, the output is coupled through this uh, capacitor here, and then it goes through a common base amplifier and goes out, okay? So that's, that's what that does there. This little section up here is a little bit strange. Um, it is just, the eight volt comes in, it goes through that switch basically, and then it turns on the oscillator. So when you have eight volts, it will turn on the oscillator. It will supply the, the, the uh, current through the uh, collector. Now, this device just has a 47 microfarad capacitor on it and a 10K. So 10K times 47 microfarads. Once that capacitor charges up enough, it will turn that transistor on. So that is a turn on delay. So when you turn the radio on, it's going to allow other parts of the radio to power up first, and then it will slowly turn on the oscillator. So the oscillator doesn't come on right away and start doing bad things right away. So this is just a, a delay, a delay on the turn, turn on. I believe it also acts as a, uh, a, a bypass um, capacitor. So you have the capacitance of this 47 microfarad times the beta of that transistor. So you're able to filter the power even more um, into the collector. So I think it's actually doing two things. Um, let me know if you, what you think that, that thing is doing. I think it's actually serving two purposes. Uh, it's serving as a, uh, I forget what they call them. I forget what they call them, uh, but it's it's uh, giving you good filtering and it's delaying the turn on. So, yeah, bonus. All right. So I think today we've learned how the VCO works and that this entire section now is the VCO, voltage controlled oscillator. Um, so 
the output of this oscillator goes and is used. This is the local, this is the intermediate frequency of the radio, the, the output of this thing. It's going to be some offset from what you want. Maybe this thing oscillates at 120 um, megahertz, but you're actually transmitting at 140 megahertz. There's some offset, and we'll, we'll get to that eventually. Um, but the point here is that from test point one to test point two, it's just a VCO. That's, 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 all, it's, that's all it's doing. All right, and just a short recap. Uh, we, now have, we now know how uh, these diodes are used, and we know how the VCO is used, and it's inside this loop. Uh, the next thing we'll cover is this. So the output of the uh, oscillator uh, goes into this device, and then it heads back down to this thing, which is much more complicated. So yeah, we'll, go, we'll cover uh, U3 uh, tomorrow.